In 1998, he began his political career as a congressman, representing the 1st District of Sorsogon for three consecutive terms. He made his mark in the lower house where he served as deputy majority floor leader and later as minority floor leader leading the fight against charter change. He won in the senatorial elections of 2007 and 2013 and is running for vice president of the republic in 2016. Good evening, I'm Tony Abad, and this is Political Capital. With us tonight is Senator Francis Joseph Guevara Escudero, an independent vice presidential candidate. Good evening, Senator Cheese. Tony, good evening sa ating televiewers. Magandang gabi di ba? Good evening. Let's start off uh, with a round of questions and uh, just want to get to know you better. Of course. Among the serious vice presidential candidates, uh, four of you are from the Bicol region. Do you think this tends to cancel you, your, you know, each other out <laughs> because you're all Bicolano. To begin with, hindi ako serious. Um, masayahin akong tao. Okay. <laughs> um, I consider it an honor for a Bicolano, for four, five, six Bicolanos or, uh, um, to be running for vice president for mm -hmm. higher office. Isipin mo, maraming kinoconsidera galing sa region namin sa napakataas na posisyon at uh, um, opisina. Ika, bilang ikalawang pangulo. I consider it an honor. I don't consider it a disadvantage whatsoever. Okay. Simply because, at least, as a Bicolano, kung sino man ang manalo sa amin, at least tiga Bicol pa rin yan. Yes. And the market is actually nationwide. It's not, it is yeah. It is nationwide. And as a Bicolano, ag again, I don't consider it something negative. I don't see it as a downside. I see it as, a, as something positive for our region. And as a Bicolano, in relation to my fellow Bicolanos who are running for vice president as well. Okay. Now, on the position of vice president, I, I always want to emphasize that uh, when you're voting for vice president, you're actually voting for a president because you're a heartbeat away. As a potential president, what yes. is the potential president she's platform? Senator Grace and I have a, the same and um, have the same platform, and we talked about the platform that she is pursuing. Okay. I think, except for one or two that we disagree on, Karamian, so nagsasang ayunan kami. Among them would be to concentrate and use the national budget as a tool, in so far as implementing our okay. platform is concerned. As chair of the committee on finance before, um, I can actually pinpoint where to get the money and how much money we have for certain particular services. For example. Um, aside from the usual um, principles governing governance like transparency, graft and corruption, um, I'll focus more on what we intend to do and spend on. We intend to spend um, on, on three basic social services, namely housing, education, and health. And mm -hmm. we intend to skew public spending towards agriculture in addition to infrastructure um, in order to make sure that um, growth will indeed be inclusive and not mutually not not in, not in exclusive in so far as the richer sectors of society are concerned to how give would, an example how will that be different from the, the current administration yeah, so the current very different is doing in terms of the national budget uh, very okay. different for example for next year for 2016 this administration will be appropriating and allocating 391 billion to construct highways and bridges on the other hand they will simply be spending 7 billion to construct farm to market roads okay. we have about 28000 um 20,000 kilometers of farm-to-market roads nationwide. At 7 billion per year, they allocated 6 billion last year. Um, it'll take us about 40 years before we can complete um, the entire 28,000 kilometer stretch of farm-to-market roads. And according to NEDA and DA, if you pave farm-to-market roads, it will give a 5 to 8 percent increase in the income and revenue of farmers. So, yun may pag-asa kang inclusive Baka maingganyo pa sila magtanim. And truly, we will be able to increase our agricultural okay. output. So it's a very different priority, prioritization with uh, the administration. Kaya namang ituloy yung infrastructure pa rin naman ng county. If you're yeah. looking at 5% of GDP target of an infrastructure spending, it's still 5% of GDP. We're talking of roughly the same amounts, but skewing it more to this particular sector that needs it the most. If you ask uh, Secretary Abad and the President himself, hmm. they'll also say, more or less the same things that they're trying to channel into infrastructure. But not in agriculture, unfortunately. Okay. Not in agriculture. Agriculture right now is at roughly 60 billion pesos per year, which is too small for that industry and sector okay. um, where 70% of our population rely on. Okay. 70% of the population, the hanap buhay nila, yung pagkabuhay nila, at yung pamilya nila, dun nakasalalay. So quite importantly, if you want growth to be really inclusive, 
Then we should start spending um, in agriculture. About new policies? Um, new policies in so far as uh, what particular um, aspect is concerned. Let's say agriculture, is there anything that you will change that's now currently being applied? No? We will conduct in the first few uh, months of um, her term a simple survey. The last time it was done, I believe, was in 1986. Mm -hmm. um, a simple survey which says using weather patterns, slope, and soil quality, what is best to plant where? Okay. Para sa gayon, ma-maximize talaga natin yung agricultural potential ng okay. ating um, bansa. For example, in typhoon-prone areas, um, the last thing you want to plant there is palay. Okay. Um, yes. In uh, areas where irrigation or water source is scarce, the last thing you want to plant there is um, a variant or a variety that needs a lot of water. So, um, gagawin namin yun para mas maging effective at efficient yung paggastos sa agrikultura. Okay. And this is part of the 20-point agenda? Yes. Yes. Cabinet position, if you were vice president. Um, ugali ko, hindi, mag, hindi sumagot ko, hindi tinatanong. Senator Grace hasn't asked me and we haven't talked about it quite frankly. Okay. Um, if, you were, if it was just a wish? Um, I don't even know, I haven't thought about it quite okay. frankly. Um, I have my core competence given the fact that I'm a lawyer and I chaired the Committee on Finance, but I've practically chaired a lot of committees in the okay. Senate. The Environment Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, the National Defense Committee, the Justice Committee. Okay. Um, what, what do you think you would enjoy the most? I think what I would enjoy the most would be what would challenge me the most. And um, that, would be, that would mean a department outside my core competence. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Outside my core competence of being a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Senator Chis, you were widely expected to actually run for president back in 2010 uh, as the standard bearer of the NPC. NPC. Yeah. Why did you not pursue? Um, before deciding not to run, I resigned from the NPC because I didn't want to put um, the then chairman of the NPC, Ambassador Kawanko, in a difficult position because two of his nephews were running also at that time. Okay. Namely, Secretary Chodoro and, um, well, President Aquino. Ah, okay. Um, so I resigned from yes. the, N the NPC so that I could decide freely on what okay. I wanted to do, which included, and as it turned out, not running. Right. And you, but you didn't just decide not to run. You, you resigned from the party. I left from the party and then I announced my um, decision because I wanted to decide um, outside, from outside of the party and not from within. Because at the end of the day, friendships go beyond politics. I didn't want my relationship with um, either Ambassador Kowanko or members of the NPC to be clouded by the difficult situation wherein he had two relatives who were running for the same position at the time. Okay, but wasn't there some discussion on the winnability of maybe the three of you know among the three of you? You might have been the most uh, winnable. At one. that time, yes. Before former President Cory Aquino died, after she died, um, changed. things changed radically. When it changed, was this? Did it also spur that that decision to to resign and, and yes. rethink your your strategy? I would be honest. Yes, because um, well, Noina is a good friend too. President Aquino is a good friend too, and that was also that also weighed heavily in my um, decision at that time. Simply put, it might be his time and not my time, and it's not for a real and good friend. You know, to um, be in the way of something that he may be destined to um, accomplish or achieve at that time. After the break, Senator Escudero's role in the presidential campaign of <coughs> Senator Grace Poe. You're still with Political Capital. And I'm Tony Abad, together with our guest, Senator Chis Escudero. Okay, let's make it a little more interesting. Yes, Tony. Rightly or wrongly, you may are... wrongly talaga. <laughs> may wrongly. Okay. Or, let's see if this is wrongly. You are perceived to be the term Rasputin. No? Manipulating uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the election of Grace Poe as President of the Philippines. Any reaction to that? Uh... Actually, you know, I've, I had to look that up in the dictionary. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so I read a little bit, okay. a little bit of so history you know who about he is Russia. Now? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I learned that after the fact. Okay. Um, I am not at all offended by that. If someone will be offended, it should be Senator Grace. Because okay. it means she does not her, mm. have her own disposition and decision making. I have proof that uh, nobody can actually dictate upon her. Um, and she showed this many times over. For example, um, the president well, practically wined and dined her five times to convince her to run as, vice, as uh, Secretary Ross's vice presidential yes. candidate. 
And he's the most powerful man in the country. Senador lang naman ako, presidente yon. Mm. Kung yung presidente, hindi nga siya nakonvincing gawin yung isang bagay, <laughs> ako pa kaya makakonvincing <laughs> sa kanya. Secondly, you might say that, well, we campaigned together, I helped her in her senatorial campaign, or I was one of those who helped her. But you have to understand that it was the president who gave her her first break in government by appointing her MTRCB chair. It was the president who included her in his slate for the Senate, mm -hmm. which she topped. And yet, when the evidence pointed to a particular direction in the Mama Sapano probe that she chaired, she said, Mr. President, you are ultimately responsible. And a guy that she, she supposedly owes a debt of gratitude to. Yes. Um, so, yung mga sinasabing, may utang na loob sa akin, makaibigan kami, pamilya, yung pamilya niya malapit sa akin. All of these she will throw down the drain if um, there is evidence and she is convinced of any wrongdoing in any case. Um, and quite frankly, um, hindi lang nila kilala siguro si Senator Grace, kaya nila nasasabi yun. Okay. O dahil babae siguro siya, kaya niya sinasabi yun. Bakit? Um, Secretary Ross has been parroting the President since day one. Why is mm. no one, nobody even saying, you are a puppet of uh, the President? <laughs> uh, or that the President is a uh, Rasputin in relation yeah. to Secretary Ross? <laughs> I hope it's not because she's a woman. I hope okay. it's not because she's a girl. That's why they're saying that somebody has to be behind her. Okay. Maybe you have that Rasputin vibe. Hindi, hindi ako marunong magmagic eh. May magic na kasama daw yun. And ano pa siya? Pari pa siya. Oh, isa pa yun. How do you see Senator Poe's hurdling the disqualification cases? I am very hopeful that she will be able to overcome these cases. I have read the briefers, yes. I have read the position papers that her lawyers filed. Both the law and the facts are on her side. Add to that, um, a previous case decided by the Supreme Court, particularly the case involving her adoptive father, FPJ, mm -hmm. wherein the Supreme Court said, we cannot leave to the unelected members of this court the power and right to decide who the next president will be. That decision is best left to the sovereign Filipino people. And as a lawyer, this is as a lawyer, you think she has a solid case? Um, of course, as a lawyer, as you very well know too, um, a lawyer can take both positions, yes. <laughs> depending on who want. your client is. <laughs> but as a lawyer and as a friend and as a Filipino, um, I think um, it would be very difficult to negate the vote of 20 million people um, that voted and supported her for um, senator. And it'll be very difficult too to negate the perception, at least based on surveys, that majority of our people, or a plurality, would want her to serve as our president. I don't think um, people should um, really stand in the way of that, if, especially if it's unclear whether or not she is indeed disqualified. Because um, as a lawyer, he who alleges must prove the same. Yes. They're saying Senator Grace is not a, not a natural-born citizen, and they should prove it. What's her nationality? Um, they're saying she's not qualified, and they should prove it. It's not for Senator Grace to prove okay. that she is qualified. So her qualification should be the presumption. Especially given the fact that she was issued a passport, that she was um, ordered, adopted by a court of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Kung hindi ka Pilipino, anong jurisdiction naman ng court ting pa-adapt ka okay. sa ibang tao. <laughs> and uh, thirdly, because um, she was allowed to run, and in fact won and ranked first when she ran for the Senate. Yes, she enjoys that presumption many times over. Okay, Senator Escudero, some critics have said that you are beholden to certain business interests or tycoons. And in specifically, they said that, let's look at the godfathers and godmothers <laughs> at the Balisin wedding. How would you say, I'm not going to be uh, influenced by these relationships with these business people? Lahat ng kinakasal, hindi ba kahit sa probinsya, pipiliin yung mayor, Mm -hmm. Congressman, yung governor, yung may-ari ng grocery. Um, dahil siyempre, nasa likod ng utak nila siguro, baka maganda yung regalo. <laughs> and of course, it's something to be proud of insofar as their parents are concerned. Okay. Um, but having said that, um, I would gladly answer that question by citing several examples. Ninong ko si Ambassador Kohuanko, but I resigned from his party. Okay. Ninong ko si dating Pangulong Estrada, pero hindi ko siya sinuportahan noong 2010 elections. Ninang ko si GMA sa unang kasal ko din, pero ako nanguna sa pag-impeach sa kanya, not once, but thrice. Okay. Um, um, having said that, ang nais ko ipunto, kung tama, tama, kung mali, mali. Um, wala akong sinantong kamag-anak ko man o ninong ko kung mali. Pero kung tama naman, wala rin rason para ipitin ko o mag-imbento ko ng kwento. The same is true for um, the people who stood a sponsor at our wedding. Most of them, in fact, um, were because of heart. 
Because most of the people I know stood as sponsors in my first wedding. And my rule was, we won't get the same people. <clears throat> as one of the poorest senators? I'm the second or third, I think. Okay. How were you able to afford such a lavish wedding? Um, maraming libre. Okay. To answer it directly, um, if you're marrying a celebrity, um, maraming na inaalok na libre. Karamihan din, halos sponsored eh. Yung MC namin, yung banda, yung gown. Um, okay, so because they, they wanted to the attach their name. Pano, huh? Yes. <laughs> they wanted to attach their name to the wedding. Okay. And we reported that out in our sal and as well as with the BIR, kung ano yung binayaran namin. Okay. At ano yung may resibo at ano yung libre. So there's a lot of advertising going on. Um, your wedding. I think she was the cover of about six magazines at that time, before our wedding and right after our wedding. So it, it had media values for them. You Actually, I forgot. Even our wedding ring was sponsored. Really? <laughs> yes. <Does> it reads? No, it's not This okay. one. Does it, it mention the name of the company? Or? Uh, no, it does not. It, does not. Okay. Uh, it was just featured in a magazine. Okay. So as, as I said, the perks of, uh, of marrying celebrities. Of marrying someone from showbiz. Not so much me, because when I got married the first time, which is when I was like, I do So it's all because of her, really. Okay. So that explains a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, going back to uh, commentators saying that you, you, you were cited having lunch with... VP Binay, and apparently mm. Senator Poe was not aware of this. Um, she was not there, not that she was not aware of it. Okay. We were invited, both invited, and apparently even Senator Poe, if she pursued and if, if she pushed through with her trip to Davao. We were invited by Congressman, former Congressman Tony Boy Florendo, okay. who was opening a new restaurant. Um, I knew he was coming. Um, I, but I didn't see any reason for me not to go and honor the invitation since I was there. Ayoko naman to nilumit yung mundo ko dahil lang may kalaban ako sa politika. Ano yung pag ninong siya sa kasal at ninong din ako, hindi na ako pupunta. Pag nasa restaurant siya, kumakain siya, nakita ko siya, hindi na ako papasok sa restaurant. Oh, eh. Hindi naman siguro ganun dapat ang politika. Um, my world should not become smaller simply because I'm running for office. Yeah. Did Besides, she have anything to say? Si... Actually, pinag-usapan namin. Ul ah, si Senator Grace? Yeah. Um, wala. Wala. Um, Wala siyang sinabi, okay. wala rin siyang reklamo. Siguro, um, Tony, Senator Grace and I have a better chance at um, overcoming and surviving this election together without having, with, without having any arguments because we go a long way. Okay. Compared perhaps to the other tandems right now, bagong kilala lang karamihan sa kanila. O ngayon lang sila nagkakasama. So these small things really don't matter um, in relation to our um, dealings with each other during the campaign or even after. Uh, before we go to break, no? yes. Now, Senator Miriam Santiago was supposedly your matchmaker <laughs> with heart. Yes. And uh, well, now she's running for president. No? If for some reason Senator Grace were disqualified, would you shift or would you uh, support? That's not on the table even, given okay. my belief and my um, hope that she will not be disqualified. Okay. And if at all, um, worst case, if at all that happens, I'll cross the bridge when I get there. But definitely, I will have to listen to what Senator Poe has to say because it's her campaign okay. that I'm running with. It's not really my campaign. When we come back, Senator Escudero stand on raging issues of the day. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still with Political Capital. Sir, in two quick sentences each, no? yes, sir. your response to certain issues. Number one, charter change. Um, if at all it will be done, it should be done at the beginning of the term of a president. I'm open to it for as long as um, a study precedes it. Okay. Freedom of information. I am the principal author in the Senate. I voted for it twice already. Unfortunately, the House has not yet passed it. Okay. The West Philippine Sea. Atin yun, di natin dapat pakawalan yun. If we don't resolve it within one term, we should continue on holding on to our interests and rights in that, even if it takes a hundred years to resolve it. Specifically, how do, we, how do you think we should pursue, well, beyond the, beyond the case at it lost? All peaceful, all peaceful means, meaning to say multilateral, regional, bilateral, back-channel, legal, all peaceful means should be pursued by government. Right now, we're not doing back-channel and bilateral. Um, for as long as it's, uh, it's a peaceful mode of resolving the dispute, we should include um, all possible mechanisms. Okay. The Bangsamoro Basic Law. 
I'm in favor of um, having a law that will improve ARMM, but not the version that OPAP and MILF presented. The Senate came out with its own version that's compliant with the Constitution and okay. that's compliant with the existing laws. Ayoko maulit yung MOA AD na pinasuka nila only to be struck down by the Supreme Court. We will make sure that the law will, the law will pass, will be compliant with the Constitution to avoid the pitfalls of the past. Okay. And the side issue of Mama Sapano and uh, SAF 44, um, I participated in the investigation. I signed the committee report of Senator Grace um, pinpointing responsibility on the MILF and some negligence or lapses on the part of the SAF itself and the AFP. Large-scale mining and natural resource extraction. I'm more in favor of large-scale than small-scale, to okay. be frank um, with you, because small-scale is uh, less supervised and most of the abuses are being done by small-scale mining. Um, however, I will, I'm, I'm all for strict implementation of the law, especially the ECC, which about half of even large-scale mining companies are violating, and about 80 to 90 percent of small-scale miners are violating. The anti-dynasty bill. Um, I am part of a dynasty um, in our province at least, not mm -hmm. directly but indirectly, because when I, when I first ran, my father was no longer serving as congressman in the district. I have said this before, I will vote in favor of it, whatever version may be, because um, I don't want to say that I'm using my own personal political interests to serve my own purposes in voting for or against this bill. However, I will not participate in the deliberations of the measure. Pag hindi kasi ako bumoto, pabor, baka wala nang maiwang bumoto. Sa dami ng dynasty sa Senado, baka hindi na po masayon. So I will vote in favor of it. It's a vote against interest, so to speak. So it is not in violation of the constitutional provision on conflict of interest. Bullet planting? Um, tanim bala. Sana palay na lang. Ay, imbis yeah. na lang. Um, why is it even a problem? There is a syndicate. Okay. The first step in resolving any problem is admitting there is a problem. There is a syndicate and government should admit that there is a syndicate. Wag nating lahat ng lahat empleyado. Hindi lahat empleyado ng OTS ay kasabot dito. But they should resolve this at the soonest possible time. And the solution of decriminalizing the carrying of three bullets, I think, is not the answer to the problem. Yes. Because if you decriminalize the carrying of three bullets here, I have several questions. One, why three, why not four, why not five, why not two, why not ten? Yeah. Number two, how sure are we that it's, Ill it's legal as well in the country of destination of the Filipino? Okay. Baka doon pa mahuli ng tatlong bala yung Filipino, doon pa makulong sa America, China, o Malaysia, yeah. o kung saan man. And so lastly, the bullet has nothing to do with it. Nananahimik lang siya, tahimik yeah. lang siya, wala siyang kinalaman dito, yung tao ang kumuha sa kanya, at naglagay sa bag. If you will pass legislation, we should address it to the people doing it, not to the bullet which is, um, which cannot and, do, cannot and will not do anything without human intervention. Yeah. And, and to reach this proportion, in terms of media... Well, it's very unfortunate indeed because the airport is the first thing that a tourist sees when he arrives in the country and the airport is the last thing that a Filipino going or living abroad will also see. And yet, this is happening in, in our airport. Not as if sapat ng pinakapangit na airport sa buong mundo yung atin, may ganito pa sa airport natin. <laughs> Senator Cheese, uh, I'll give you a last word before we, we say goodbye to our audience. Um, sana sa darating na panahon, linggo at buwan, um, kaugnay ng um, pagsapit ng halalan sa 2016, um, mabigyan kami ng pagkakataon, mailhad yung aming plataforma, programa, meetin, pangarap at layunin para sa bansa. Kasama at kapiling si Senator Grace at yung aming slate sa pagka-senador o anumang posisyon sa bawat munisipyo at lalawigan ng bansa. Tony, maraming Senator salamat. Senator thank you very much. Maraming salamat din sa ating televiewers. Magandang gabi po at maraming salamat din sa inyo. Politics has been his profession through most of his young life. Only 46 years old, Senator Chis Escudero straddles both the analog and digital generations at the cusp between the baby boomers and generation extras. If he plays his cards right, he might even end up as the country's president sooner than his detractors think. In 2010, he bet on an unlikely Noi B combination and won. Will luck be on his side again in 2016? This is Tony Abad for Political Capital. Thank you and we'll see you again next Wednesday.